The story of Kaniska goes way back, about as far back as the founding of the county. It was 1856, the same year that a post office was established in Glencoe, and that the county of McLeod was officially recognized as a county. That same year, a man known only as Mr. Spencer was traveling along the Crow River when he came to a spot that looked good for building a mill. With thoughts of enterprise in mind, Mr. Spencer built a dam out of dirt, one that is still visible all these years later. With a mill in place, people began coming to the area, and soon the mill on the river had turned into a little town, complete with a blacksmith, a creamery, and a few houses. It was a promising little town, one that residents had actually named McLeod. They say those early settlers were a hardy bunch, single men looking to carve out a settlement in an unforgiving wilderness. An old legend has it that one day an Indian came into the settlement and took notice that there were no women about, that only men seemed to live in the little village. He asked them, where are all of your wives? When he learned that 52 men lived in town and only one woman, he exclaimed, Kuniska, which according to the legend means no women. From then on, folk ceased to call the town McLeod and began referring to it as Kuniska. The little town continued to grow, as did nearby Lake Addy, Hutchinson, and Glencoe. Yet the people of town needed something to set it apart from the others, something that would put little Kuniska on the map. In the summer of 1859, a petition was made to build a bridge in the town, a bridge to cross the Crow River. Surely, at a time when no bridge to cross the river existed in the county, it would separate Kaniska from the other towns in the area. It was the spring of 1870. Henry Abbott had been missing for several days, and it seemed the entire town of Kaniska was on the edge of their seats, waiting and wondering what could have happened to the man who disappeared the day of April 23rd. Mr. Henry Abbott had left his home that afternoon. People say he was headed to an acquaintance in Glendale, a man known only as the Frenchman. No one but the mysterious host knows if Henry made it or not, because he never came home. It didn't take long before people in Kaniska realized Henry was missing. A search party went out, but the only thing to turn up was a hat found downriver from the bridge. Upon inspection, it was assumed the hat belonged to Mr. Abbott. Those in town feared the worst, feared that Henry had drowned in the cold water of the Crow River. For days they searched, dragging the riverbed and scouring the banks for any sign of Henry Abbott. Yet with all of their searching, the whereabouts of Mr. Abbott remained a mystery. For the time being, the little village of Kaniska would have to wait and to wonder, where was Henry Abbott? In the spring of 1870, the water was high. By May, men were out dragging the river in a furious search for Henry Abbott. The body was eventually recovered, having been removed from the water where it laid for 12 days. Mr. Abbott's body was inspected and showed no immediate signs of violence. Yet questions remained as how he reached his death. Assuming he was not drowned by another, he either drowned himself or fell off the bridge while crossing it. In the years to come, Kaniska would see its decline. When the railroads came through the county in the 1880s, they went clear around Kaniska, and the town began to dry up. In 1881, the dam burst due to the high water and the mill was destroyed. The post office closed in 1882, and soon people began moving out of the town. Today, the town of Kaniska is a distant memory, one that most have forgotten or have never known about. The only remains are the rusting hulk of a steel bridge built in 1904, a cemetery, and the rough remains of an earthen dam built over a century ago. It was July 2nd, 1863. The Battle of Gettysburg was at its second day. Confederate General Robert E. Lee had his troops pressuring the entire Union defensive line. Around dusk, the Confederates realized nearly one quarter of a mile of the Union line was virtually unguarded. Union leader, Major General Winfield Scott Hancock, realized the mistake made by the Union and ordered the 1st Minnesota 
a force of 262 men to fix bayonets and charge a massive number of Confederates rushing toward the gap in the Union line. Hancock told the first Minnesota to give him five minutes. They gave him 15. The first Minnesota was a veteran group. They'd been in nearly all major engagements of the war, going back to the first battle of Bull Run. They were a hardy lot, a regiment made of farmers, loggers, and all manner of men who struggled to survive on the harsh Minnesota frontier. In the regiment was a young soldier named Henry Abbott, an 18-year-old farmer from Kaniska. He fought in several major engagements. In July of 1862, he was captured and held in Richmond, Virginia. He was later paroled and able to rejoin his regiment. On July 2nd, 1863, he found himself as part of a charge that may have been the very act that saved the Union from defeat in the war against the South. The Confederates were less than 350 yards away from the Union lines, 1,200 rebel soldiers threatening to split the Union army in two. Success meant that General Lee would have his victory and nothing but a defeated and retreating Union army would stand in his way from invading Washington, D.C. The first Minnesota were well aware of what was at stake and also well aware that their charge was little more than a human wave assault one where they were being ordered to sacrifice their lives in an attempt for General Hancock to buy enough time to reinforce the gap in the line. The charge was courageous to say the least. The first Minnesota were outnumbered five to one. Five times the flag fell and five times it was picked up again. They were victorious against all odds, yet it came at a cost. 82% of the first Minnesota were either killed or wounded. The 45 survivors rallied around General Hancock, who reflected that it was the most courageous charge in the history of modern warfare. The survivors of the charge were merged with another company and put on Cemetery Ridge, a place thought safe from a Confederate advance. Yet, as fate would have it, the position was again charged on July 3rd, and the 1st Minnesota were again entrusted with defending the Union line from the famed Pickett's Charge. Henry Abbott survived the Battle of Gettysburg, but suffered a bullet wound to each of his legs. He spent six months recovering in a hospital and was honorably discharged on May of 1864. He returned home, but like so many others, the war never fully left the young man. He was treated often, most notably by McLeod County's first female doctor, Dr. Mary Gazin. It was also said that he suffered dizzy spells after the war that from time to time he'd lose his balance. For those who knew Henry Abbott, the 27-year-old farmer who lived near Kaniska, the mystery to his death was no mystery at all. They felt it was his dizzy spells, which were a result of the war that caused him to fall into the Crow River in 1870. It was an unfortunate death for a man who was a hero among men. Here we are at Bear Creek, near the site of the once famous McLeod County town of Kaniska. If you look behind me, you can see the old steel bridge that was built in the early part of the 20th century. It's one of the only things remaining from the old town of Kaniska. 
Though the bridge behind me is not the bridge that Henry Abbott fell off of in the autumn of 1870, it was a bridge very near here that it happened. Uh, what is kind of interesting to note is that year the water was high, much like it is this year. So if we if we kind of look around here, we can see how high the river actually is this year. So it would have been very similar to that. Um, and as the story goes, they drug the river for a number of days before they finally before they finally found the body and. Uh, there was a little bit of mystery around, you know, how he died. Some people think maybe he was pushed in. Um, however, you know, as the story goes, you know, once you start looking at uh, Henry Abbott's background, it's more likely that he was probably suffering from a dizzy spell um, as a result of the war and fell into the water. Here we are at the Gretchel Cemetery just outside of Bisky, Minnesota, and here lies Henry Abbott right here, a uh, Civil War hero who fought with the first Minnesota. Um, it's kind of a shame to see a war hero like this, um, you know, in a kind of hidden away from history, but a uh, little bit of detective work and uh, thanks to Kay Johnson from the Hutchinson Leader, and here we are. So uh, just kind of, a, kind of a surreal place right here, kind of, kind of you know, very quiet and uh, maybe it, actually maybe it's more fitting that he's that he's in a nice place like this so uh, we thought maybe you'd like to see it I know we sure wanted to see it so all right now that we finally have a break in traffic because uh, apparently everybody found out that there was something going on in Kaniska, so they had to drive by and take a look. Um, but it's just us, so I hate to disappoint everyone. Um, but at any rate, I just wanted to thank you for joining us on another adventure with History Quest. And uh, join us again next month where we'll have a historical topic to go over and you know, perhaps maybe even go to another famous site like Kaniska. So uh, in other news, I just wanted to let you know that uh, in November, our uh, monthly breakfast club meeting will be on the last Tuesday in November at 10.30 a.m. And Lynn Buck will be joining us to talk about quilt making. So uh, don't miss out on that opportunity. And also uh, in December, we have a gala coming up. It'll be held at the Crow River Country Club. It's Roaring Twenties themed. So, you know, make sure to go out there and buy your gala dress and buy yourself a fedora and stop on in for our gala. Tickets should be going on sale pretty soon. So just kind of stay tuned and you'll hear more about that. Uh, for now, however, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next month where we're going to go on the search for Bigfoot. Bigfoot.